Hey guys, it's Denim or Den Weasel or whatever. Uh, how's everyone doing? So, uh, for today we'd have a go at another trick tip. Now, I've neglected my duties a little bit in that uh, I've been going for trick tips that are aimed at the more intermediate or advanced freestylers. So today, I'm saying screw those guys. We're taking it right back to fundamentals. We're going to go for some basics. Uh, because I think the important thing is to get beginners into freestyle and help you guys out. So I'm going to be doing a few of these videos. Let's start with this one and get you guys going. So today is all about pogos, all right? They are a pretty kind of quintessential freestyle trick. Now, I wouldn't call them a trick as such. I think they're more like the connective tissue between tricks. So it's not necessarily about the pogo, it's a trick you do out of it. Much in the same way that getting into rail or primo um, is kind of, it's more about the trick you do out of it rather than the, the primo itself, if that makes sense. So when you're learning, these are one of the tricks that definitely you'll look at and think, that's a freestyle trick, I want to get it down. But there's a few things we need to think about to be able to do this one properly. So I'm going to talk you through it because there's a few different ways in which we can do this one. So I'll talk you through all three different types, I think it's three anyway, and we'll see how you get on. We'll step them up from kind of easy going through to harder. <laughs> So what is the pogo? So a pogo is basically where we're in a 50-50 or a truck stand and we're bouncing up and down a little bit and then getting back out of it either with a finger flip or even just throwing the board back down if you're just starting on these. One thing that's worth bearing in mind is that if you're riding a freestyle board this is going to be a little bit easier for you. If you've got a flatter tail like mine so it's a bit more, um, it's a bit more squared off on the end you're going to be able to hold your 50-50s and your pogo is a little bit easier. Also, you're not going to smash your board up and deal on it. I'd recommend having skid plates and if you're really taking a beating on the tail, then maybe go for wood screws as well. But skid plates should do the job here. So first of all, let's look at how to get up into that 50-50. So we're going to be starting off in tail stop. So my back foot's on the tail. Uh, my front foot is kind of just at the side of the board but off the floor. What we're going to do is reach down with our leading hand. We're going to pull the board upwards. As we're doing that, we're passing the board to our back hand, which is now going to hold it. And we're hopping off the back foot and switching the front foot underneath the board and locking it onto the back truck. So you want to be good at this getting into 50-50 before you start learning how to pogo. This is like the basic fundamental to get going with your pogo tricks. So practice keeping your balance a little bit. Try and keep fairly over the board so you kind of most of your body weight is over that back truck just to help you keep your balance. Remember to use that leg that isn't on the truck to balance you as well. Keep it up off the floor though. And then to get out of that, all you're doing is throwing the board back down. Or if you're feeling pretty funky, you can do a half finger flip out. So where you're throwing the board away from you by twisting your wrist a little bit. Brilliant. So if you've pretty much got that, then the next thing is to get into the pogo itself. So we'll start off with the handed pogo and then we'll go into the no handed one. So what we're going to do here is that same motion. We're going to reach down with the front leading hand pass the board up to our backhand while hopping off that back foot and locking the front foot in on the truck. But this time, as soon as we've caught the board with our backhand, we're going to bring our front hand around and wrap it around the outer edge of the board, so the outer rail of the board, the one that's furthest away from you. Now at this point, you might see some dudes kind of grab the board by the wheel or by the truck you can do that, it's just my personal opinion that it looks and feels a bit more comfortable uh, grabbing on the rail of the board. So once we've caught the board, we're keeping that back foot that isn't on the truck out. 
So we're not putting it down on the floor, we're using it almost like a counterweight. And what we're going to do is we're going to hop a little bit just on that foot that's on the truck and simultaneously pull the board upwards with us. Now again, make sure your weight is kind of over that truck. It's going to take a little bit of strength in the arms to keep it up. And make sure that you're keeping your foot really nice and locked into that truck. Otherwise, what you can find can happen is that your foot slips off the wheel. So that's the, the handed pogo. That's where we're using our hands in, in the pogo to be able to get the hop. Now, you can do this no-handed as well. A little bit old school and uh, looks pretty cool. And there's tons of different things you can do with it. So let's have a look at that one. That's enough. So if you're going for the no-handed pogo, what we want to do this time is again reach down with our front hand and this time rather than pass the board to the back hand, we're going to throw it upwards, jump off the back foot just as before, but this time we're almost going to use our feet to lock the board into place, okay? So as soon as that jump is, is done off the back foot and the front foot is on the truck, you're going to clamp the board in between your legs a little bit. Now this is where a lot of people struggle because sometimes the board's going to clatter your shins a little bit, particularly if the kingpin on your truck sticks out a little bit. To counteract that while you're learning, wear trousers, I would say, wear jeans if you can do, or pants if you're in America. And um, also, if you need to wear a shin guard, do that. Uh, it's going to save you a little bit of pain further down the line. So when we're up in that no-handed pogo, what we're going to do with the back foot is bend the knee a little bit. Not too much, but just a bit. And as soon as you've locked the board into place, you're just going to see if you can hop a little. Keeping your legs pretty engaged so that you're really locking the board into place. Again, we're keeping our weight centred more over that truck so we're not leaning either side. Because if we do that, we'll just topple over. So try and keep your weight fairly centred over that back truck. Rad, if you've got those down, awesome. If it's all making sense to you, even better. Uh, the last thing we can learn to do, now that we've got a good feel for how the pogo works, is we can learn to pull the board up with our foot. So we're getting rid of the hands from the equation completely. So this time, again, we're in a tail stop position. And rather than reaching down and grabbing the nose of the board with our leading hand, we're going to get our foot underneath about halfway up the board. So it's hooked underneath. We're going to push up with that front foot, hop off the back foot and slide our foot down to lock onto the truck. Now it's up to you how you want to do this one. You can either pull the board up and then get into a handed pogo or you can go to a no handed one. So we're shoveling that front foot under, pulling it up and pushing the board over to our back foot a little bit while sliding the foot down to lock onto the truck and then engaging that other foot right tucked into the board just like with a no-handed pogo if you're doing that one or keeping the foot out to the side and grabbing with the hands if you're doing the handed version. Again, keep the weight over that back truck a bit but you might have to lean a tiny little bit towards your back foot just as you're sweeping the board up to make sure the board tips properly and you're locking it in place. I hope that makes sense. That was a little bit harder to explain than I thought. So those are your kind of three main ways of getting into a pogo. Now, there's tons of different things you can do back out of these. In terms of tricks out of them, that's probably something best kept for another video, otherwise this is going to be like even longer than it already is. Um, so, work on getting into Pogo super consistently first. Be confident with it. It is a really useful trick. It's a really good little connection between tricks that you can use as well. So, it's important that you get good at these. Some people um, will do a lot of different pogo tricks, others will only do a couple, it doesn't really matter, it's entirely up to you, you're the one who is skating. So, love them or hate them, they're definitely something that's going to help you out in your skating, particularly for freestyle. You probably wouldn't do it straight. I mean, there's dudes who pogo down like stair sets and stuff, but that's, yeah, it's not my bag, man. Rad, get out there and give them a go, if you need help. 
get in touch with me i'm here to help you that's what i want to do um if you like the video as always like share and subscribe uh, and um give me a shout if there's any other tricks you want to see i think next time we'll be doing some more beginner stuff so best of luck get cracking get out for a skate and enjoy yourself most importantly cheers guys take care now bye bye there's a body i know